Welcome in this video. We will explain to you briefly how the communication is handled between machines in factories and what are the research directions of agile automation in this field. We will talk about interoperability and communication standards such as SexGem and OPC UA. We hope you will enjoy. Suppose that you are an equipment manufacturer and want to sell your machines to a factory that has an MES. The MES must communicate with your equipment so it can control and monitor it. It also should properly be informed of alarm situation or receive the value of the variables of interest, such as the temperature or pressure. You can use your favorite technology to do that, but the factories must support it and the data semantics must be preserved. Indeed, it would be bad if the MES thought you are sending the pressure in Pascal while you send the value in bar. You can create your own semantics to communicate, but then development must be done on the MES side to ensure the semantics is respected. This is where standards come in handy. Compliance to a standard serves as a contract between the two machines that will define which data will be exchanged and remove all ambiguities when exchanging them. So, standards allow machines to interoperate, but it also allows to reduce the time to market and the cost of development. Indeed, the way to communicate is always the same, and so the same piece of software can be reused. In the semiconductor industry, the communication is carried out using SEX2 and GEM standards. In this demonstration, only SEX2 was used. In other industries, the OPC UA standard is used more and more for communication purpose. In the future, OPC UA could be used in the semiconductor industry as well, and the purpose of this research was to know if the needs of semiconductor industries could be met by the OPC UA standard. Our journey started by mapping the SEX2 standard with OPC UA. The host MES will send a message to a software component called Bridge that will do the mapping. We succeeded in making it work and created a generic way to transform OPC UA into SEX2 and vice versa. This approach is described in the two of our research papers that you can find in the description of this video. We thank the CA for their collaboration and in this work under the European Project Productive 4.0. In the following demonstration, the following use cases have been analyzed. First, polling of multiple variables. The IDs of the variables that should be read are sent to the bridge that will transfer the request. The, v the values are then returned. Second, sending commands to the equipment from the MES. In semiconductor domain, these are called remote commands. Finally, sending event notification with contextual variables to the host. This use case is a little trickier in the semiconductor industries and others. Indeed, the context is not known by the equipment but by the MES, so it is the responsibility of the system to specify the variables it should receive from the equipment at runtime. To do that, contextual variables are grouped together inside reports. For instance, the report one aggregates the operation result and the control state variables of the equipment. Events that should return the contextual variables are bound to the report. For instance, the report one that was defined before can be linked to recipe ended events. Then, each time the event is triggered, the values of the variables are sent alongside the event. Continuing with the last example, when the recipe ends, a recipe ended event is triggered and the event notification is sent along with the control state and operation result variable. In this example, the MES would receive the recipe ended event notification 
a zero that corresponds to the control state and a zero meaning the operation was successful. So, now let's go to the demonstration. We use the following scenario for the demonstration. The scenario is an oven that hates wafers. It can apply preloaded recipes composed of multiple steps. Each step will change the temperature and pressure of the oven. Moreover, the wafers are loaded manually. So now I will start the host simulation, equipment simulation and the bridge. I will see you soon. So I have launched the three components. On the top left of the screen is a simulation of an MES, on the bottom right the simulation of an equipment, and on the top right you can see the bridge that will transform the OPC UA message received from the MES into sex2 message that will be sent to the equipment and vice versa. So the goal of this demonstration is to show you how the bridge can make the MES and the equipment interoperate despite the fact that they are compliant to two different standards. And to do that, I will show you how we handle the execution of a simple recipe. So while waiting for the connection, I will briefly explain the interface of the equipment and the MES. On the bottom right of the inter equipment interface, you have three buttons that simulate physical operations on the machine. On the center, you have the software that an operator would see with the variables, the monitoring of the current recipe, and controls over the state of the machine. Finally, the panel on the right gives you the IDs of the events that will be exchanged between the host and the equipment. On the host interface, all blue buttons send a message to the host. All fields give parameters to the messages. Some of the data given by the equipment are displayed here. And on the bottom you can find all the messages sent by the equipment. You can see on the bridge that an OPC UA message was received to connect the two systems and that the bridge sent a sex2 message to the equipment. Messages from the equipment that gives more information to the MS were also sent, as you can see here. So, before anything else, I will put the equipment on a remote mode, meaning that the MES will be the one controlling the equipment. Okay, so after the recipe is finished, the MES wants to know the results of the steps performed, so the recipe ended event here and the operation results variable need to be linked together. So to do that, I will use the functionality of reports. So first, let's define a report containing the operation results variable. This report will have the ID 101 and the operation result as the ID 3100. Uh, so I put 3100 on the VID field. Okay. And now I send the message. Once again, an OPC UA message was received while a sex2 message was sent to the equipment. When defining a report, an acknowledgement was sent by the equipment as an answer. It is used to know if the message has been considered. Zero means everything worked perfectly. Okay, and it is zero that we received. Good, now let's link this report to the collection event recipiented. As displayed on the equipment, the recipiented event has an event ID of 4005, so let's write its value here. I want to link the report having the report ID 101, so I put 101 in this field and send the message. Zero has been received, so the report is now linked to the event. Okay, so now let's poll the different variables so that the va status variables uh, displayed on the MES side are the same as the variables on the equipment side. So I start the polling with a frequency of 1000 milliseconds and 
the temperature is now the same than the temperature displayed by the equipment. I will let the polling run as a background task during the whole scenario. Ok, it's time to simulate the execution of a recipe. First, I open the door and as you can see on the bridge, a sex2 message was sent to the bridge and then transferred using OPC UI to the MES. Then I close the door, the event was received and inform the MES that everything is ready by pressing the on off button. Ok, now let's send a command called PPI select on the MES side that will choose the recipe to start. The recipe chosen is head oven and the second parameter gives the pressure that should not be exceeded. During the execution of the recipe, the temperature and pressure will change, so you, you will see that the host will be synchronized with the equipment. You will also see that different collection events, such as recipe started on or stop ended, will be sent during the execution of the recipe. Then I send the command. You can see that the recipe has been launched and the host received the collection event 4003. Uh, also, for each step, a collection event 4004 was sent and at the end of the recipe, the collection event 4005 was received. At the beginning of the demonstration, I bound the report 101 to this event, and so the operation result variable was received as well as a notification. You can see that for each step, a zero was sent, meaning that the operation was successful. To conclude this demonstration, let's connect a generic client to this equipment. Indeed, the host that we created is specific to our system, but a real equipment should be able to connect to a wide variety of other MES. I'm launching right now the OPC Foundation client. Thanks to the browsing of OPC UA, you can see the different services offered by the bridge. Let's call the RUSER service. You can see the message has been received by the bridge and by the equipment. Thanks for watching this video and I hope you could learn a few things. Don't forget to check our other related products on the website.